Oh, the color of your no, yeah. color collar went back down. Okay. Um, hi. Um, welcome to the Nurse with Needles podcast. <laughs> what? <laughs> you have issues. I'm just thinking of um, Catholic Stuff You Should Know podcast. Sometimes those guys are so goofy. They'll just go podcast, podcast, podcast. I feel like they'll do their own echo. Yeah, they do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, anyway, welcome to Nurse with Needles podcast. Uh, if you are a new viewer, welcome. This is a knitting, crocheting kind of podcast, among other things. Um, where did the Where's tissues go? Oh, um, back there. You know that. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> well. Oh well, for you. I'm in the middle of the cold. I do not wish to get up. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, no, excuse me. Don't go this way, okay? Um, my nice purple outfit. There. Sorry, but I thank you. Um, uh, <clears throat> I am your host. Um, my name is Talia, also known as Franciscan Gypsy on Ravelry and on Clerk. And I apologize, my voice will probably be going in and out. Um, <clears throat> I think you've been hanging around with um, Kathy. Yes, yeah, she. Gave it to me, right? Yep. Via the interwebs. Yep. Your turn. It's all cats, it's all <coughs> I'm Marlisha, also known as Lady Fernico on Ravelry and Clark. And you are getting my. I had a choice between sleeping in or <coughs> getting up and showering for a podcast, and I decided that I preferred to sleep in. Mm. So that's what you're getting. Um, although I'm not sleeping as incredibly late as it might seem. It is. Monday, October 15th, around uh, 3.42. I usually get up around 2.30 on a normal basis because I work night shift and I live a night shift schedule. So I only slept in about, okay, because I really didn't sleep in at all. I think I slept in 15 minutes. Maybe a little bit, yeah. I intended to get up at noon, but that wasn't going to happen. It wasn't going to happen. Um, anyway, uh, if my voice goes in and out, I thought that I had just bullied my voice too much when I had um, uh, done the, spent six hours at uh, Come Explore Nursing where we show different cool things about nursing to um, <clears throat> uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, that kind of thing. Um, there were at least a hundred kids in a room at a time and with everyone was trying to shout over each other. I had the heart dissection um, table, which is what I had the last time I um, took part. Um, I love the heart. I don't like dissection so much, not because I think it's gross, but because the anatomy always looks slightly different than the picture. Um, anywho, um, yeah, so I thought that that's why I was losing my voice. I think I actually have a touch of something because apparently I don't handle staying up 24 plus hours as well as I used to. Um, I guess I'm getting old. You're ancient. I know. <clears throat> so as nice as it would be able to be to blame uh, Cappy 319. 913? I think it's 913. Kathy from Knit Nerd Podcast because she was sick. It would be so much fun to blame her. I think I could actually blame my own stupidity. Um, anyway, let's jump right into the podcast after that long introduction. Um, the first thing that I am going to talk about is um, my Legolas project. You guys have seen this frequently. I worked on it, but I didn't work on it a whole heck of a lot. Excuse me. Oh, look, look at pretty much. You know you are a night nurse when you can only tell time with a 24-hour clock. Eating microwave popcorn out of a clean bedpan is perfectly normal. By the way, sometimes I want to clean urinal and put um, tea in there. Oh. <laughs> Not lemonade? Through, no tea. Yeah, then that's true. Well, you can get some. That would be a UTI. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what that's disgusting. That's disgusting. <laughs> the bladder can expand to the same size as a Winnebago's water tank. If you only go once in 12 hours, yeah. Um, 
and you can only tell it's a full moon with I mean, you can tell it's a full moon without having to look at the sky, which is true as well. Uh, Nights really do go crazy. Uh, I, I'll be right back. I chased her away. I need. I, love, I, love I think she's gonna go and. Anyway. Good job. Anyway, that is my um, night nurse mug. But what I actually wanted to show you was not that project. I keep changing out what project goes in what bag. No, but I keep starting new projects. Okay. It's actually in my, uh, Mugless is actually in my Sheep's Knitting Bag by uh, Knitting's My Bag, Lois. Um, we actually met Lois. That was fun. On, well, not met, met, but we met her online. We did, She had a... Um, An impromptu to get together. She, uh, she left a little message on Plurk saying, I'm hanging out if anybody wants to join me. And I said, Lois is out. <laughs> So, so we actually got to put a face. We got to talk to her and see her. That was really a lot of fun to put a face to the name. But legless. Um, this is a Vivian pattern by Osalba Teague. I'm making it for me in size 36. I'm using US 9. None of my projects want to stay on their, on their little thing. They hate you. Um, US 9 nitpicks nine, interchangeable circulars. Um, 32 inch cables. I'm using Stonehenge Fiber Mill Shepherd's Wool in the Blue Spruce colorway. For this pattern, you need to know how to cast on, to knit, to purl, to work seed stitch, to cable for back, to cable for front, to make one left, put to purl two or three together, to purl front and back, to pass slip stitch over, to slip slip knit, to slip two together, to twist three or four back, to twist three or four front, to knit together, and how to work from a chart. You also need a cable needle, although um, a DPN will work just as well. Um, a removable marker and a zipper. Um, and for those people who are interested in learning to add zippers, there is a really cool YouTube video. Um, I might have to write a note to link YouTube video on adding zippers. It was really nice. Uh, you all saw that last week. Um, cause, um, sorry, um, interweave put out a really good YouTube video on adding a zipper. So I'll try to link that when I uh, put up the show notes. Um, so that is the uh, Legolas. Um. This pattern is probably an intermediate pattern, at least, with all the skills you need to know. It's really pretty. This one has a hood, right? <laughs> no, it does not. Wait, does it? <laughs> I think it might. You're right. This one does have a hood. I just haven't gotten that far. Um, let me switch it around so we can actually see the cable. There we go. Oops, hold on. Actually, I'm just. Sure. see it on the other side. No, the, the other side is that's the back of the cable. Yeah. There's some of the cable there. Yeah. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of work on it. Yeah. I just have felt lazy and I've worked on projects that require less concentration. It's not that it's a hard pattern. Well, it it's intermediate for the skills you need to know. But it, once you get a hang of whatever skills you need to know. It's not hard. You just have multiple charts to work from. So you have to flip from one chart to the next multiple times throughout the row. I mean, I think there's mm, two or three charts that I'm using each row. Um, so I have to, since I have I finished my uh, writing for this period, I'll probably be able to focus more on my things with charts. Uh, maybe I'll work on this tonight. But that is my leg list. And I have a feeling this podcast is going to be a little longer because I'm kind of dragging. Um, Should I poke you with my poking stick? No, it's not like I'm tired dragging. It's just it takes me a little longer my brain together. <coughs> <laughs> this chamomile tea is good. I'm going to ignore her. Oh. Oh, you're ruining the chamomile. I am not. The chamomile mm-hmm. cannot, in fact, be ruined. Do not ruin my <laughs> zen moment. My zen moment. My chamomile moment. <laughs> 
I have chai. Chai tea. Chamomile trumps. Chai tea. I haven't had chamomile in forever. Anyway. Um, oh, I, you know, I always leave Nightwing in the other room. I'm not going to go and get it. They know what Nightwing looks like. You guys have seen my Nightwing show. <clears throat> I've been working on it forever. Although it finally feels like it's growing a little bit, which is why I wanted to show it this week, but I left it in the other room. Just think how much bigger it'll be when you show it next week. <laughs> I'll probably leave it in my first It'll be huge. Um, I still won't be at the crochet part because I still only work on it when I'm at work or uh, shopping. And the other day I didn't even work on it at work. I took something else to work. I mean, I had it with me, but I worked on something else. Uh, anyway, the the project you are not seeing right now is Nightwing Shawl, which is a sadness shawl by Mary Lena Lynx. Um, and I'm not going to go through all the stats because you can't see it. <laughs> Just rest assured I worked on it. Um, and that's my work knit, knitting. <clears throat> as much as I think shawls are probably a really good um, project for like purses or um, if you like lace work or whatever, I think they're not quite me. I don't enjoy making them. So I'll finish the two shawls I have on my needles, but I probably won't start another one. Um, who knows? I always say that, and then I end up starting another something. Okay, the project that I've been in love with, in love with right now. Polygamous. The project I've been in love with right now. In your no-maker's bag. In my no-maker's bag. With my slip-stitched uh, studio's DPN case. Okay, so this is my simple spidey sock only one sock at this point almost a hoe not there yet um, it's by Adrian Koo it's a simple skip socks uh, making it for me um, using US2 I started with Clover DPNs and then I got Nitpix DPN so I'm very happy um, it's Desert Vista Dye Works um, yarn in the I could have been a superhero colorway. This is from my stash. I got it heavens a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, You're <coughs> buying up everything. For this pattern, you need to know how to cast on, to knit, to purl, to knit two together, to purl two together, to skip, to slip stitch, to slip slip knit, to yarn over, and to Kitchener. Um, so, um, I made this in. <coughs> The, it's a small size, which is eight inches around the widest part of your foot. My foot tends between eight and a half and nine. I probably should have gone the next size up, but I hate, hate floppy socks. Last pair of socks, the first pair of socks I made, every time I take my slipper off or my shoe off or whatever, the sock comes right off. So I went a little tighter. I'm hoping that it won't be too tight. If it is, she gets it. But she's not going to get it. <laughs> because there's ribbing on this and it'll stretch. And it'll keep it from being too tight. <clears throat> so I've got my cute little ducky stitch marker. I haven't showed my stitch markers for a while. Probably because most of my projects haven't been using stitch markers. There we go. So I turned the heel and I am just out of the gusset. I finished the gusset this morning. You're cool. Look how nice it's striping. I like the evenness of the stripe. And I really think that I like um, working cuff down socks. I thought I'd be a toe up girl, but I really like working socks traditionally. I like being able to see the heel take pl take formation. And the gusset's not as hard as I thought it was from everyone's complaining. I thought the gusset was terrible. It was going to be terrible. I like the gusset. It's not a big deal. You just pick up some stitches. Uh-huh. <coughs> so, yep, I, I'm just working on the foot. It's kind of hard to try on with the DPN sticking out. Um, I think I have six inches to go before I start the toe. Hopefully when I get a little closer to that point, I'll actually be able to put my foot in there without snapping the DPNs. If I'm really worried about how far they're to go, I'll just put yarn to pick up all my stitches and um, do it oh, that way. Time. Yeah, waist turn. So, hopefully I can just try it on the DPN sticking out. But yeah, 
And that's the other thing that I never thought I'd like was working with deep pants, and I really do. So this is my I never thought I would socks. They're so pretty. Yeah, I'm very happy with them. I can't wait till they're done. I really hope that I gambled right in the fact that the size is a little uh, small based on my measurement because I want to wear these as my scrubs because they don't have any uh, restrictions on what kind of socks you can wear. And most of because I'm taller, I'm not tall, tall, but I am taller. Um, and for something that's going to fit me around the waist, uh, I need, I wear a small pair of pants because it's some, I need it to fit it around the waist. But because of that, it tends to ride a little high when I sit. Um, so this will be something nice to show the few times I sit at work. I, I get a reputation for work at doing everything standing, so. Um, I even eat standing. The only thing I might sit for is uh, reading the telemonitors. And even then, if my student's doing it for me, um, she, uh, I'll just stand over her shoulder. And she's actually getting really good at it. I think she's going to, um, I'm hoping that that will be something that helps her with her NCLEX. I know I wish it was something that I knew how to do when I left nursing school. Anyway. <clears throat> Those are the simple uh, spidey socks. Or that is the simple spidey sock. Maybe one singular. One singular. Hopefully next week or two I'll have a real hoe for you. And for those of you who are not familiar with podcasts, knitting podcast language, hoe is half object. It is a term that was coined by the sock knit zombies referring to socks. I always have to pause when I think of that. <laughs> so, the next project... I started this one. I started a couple projects, which is why some of the other projects that have been on the needles haven't been getting love that they should. Um, the next project I started was a Heavenly Sapphire. Um, and it is a twin set sweater and cardigan by Claire Montgomery. And they came from Mom. Um, this is something that I promised her. Yeah, I'm not even being secretive about it. This is something I promised her a while back. Um, let me actually, I have the pattern right here next to me marked. It's really a pretty pattern. I was going to do it in a different yarn, but I read up on it. It was Yarn B's, um, something other. I'll, it's on a different project. The uh, peacock, peacock color yarn she had last week. Yeah, uh, and I was going to do it in that, but every review I read said it was scratchy, and it just wasn't working out the way I wanted to. I wasn't loving the way it was working out for this project, so I throbbed it and started again. Um... It's a, it's besides, this is a DK weight sweater. I don't want to move this so you can't see the pattern. There we go. Yeah, I think there we go. Um, it's twin set sweater and cardigan. It's from the book Knitting Vintage, which has all sorts of cool patterns in it. This is the first time I've worked from the book, though. The setup kind of intimidates me a little bit, but I'll let you know how I like it as I go along. It's got some beautiful patterns in it. Oh, I like that. I mean, look at that. That is cool. That's a cow. I really like that a lot. Um, and the one that Davina, well, Davina likes a lot of the ones in here. She's very much a vintage girl. I mean, that. When you get into 60 stuff, which are just ugly. Yeah. But, um, of course, she likes it. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably the stuff in the 40s is the. 40s and 50s and 30s. They have 30s? Uh, 30s isn't really. I can't really click, I don't quite see stuff I like in the 30s here. 40s is really nice. Yeah, we like the 40s style. We watch a lot of old movies and stuff, get our fashion sense Here's from there. the 50s. Yeah, you, the cow you liked was in the 50s. Yeah. Lacy dress. Anyway. A lot of the nice sweaters are in the 50s. So. But most of the, one, the ones I really like tend to be in the 40s. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, that is where the what the pattern I'm working on. Um, Although I'm only working on the gauge swatch. I had two gauge swatches I need to do. I needed to do a stockinette one, which I completed. And the color is gorgeous. It's, ab it's absolutely my color. I love it. It's kind of a royal sapphire blue. It's beautiful. I love it. So that's a stockinette. My color. That's a stockinette um, gauge swatch. It's so pretty. So and that still needs to be blocked uh, so I can see if it's big enough or, the pro or if I just go up and down needle size. Um, hopefully it'll be perfect and I can just get started. Um, 
the, uh, the yarn that you were seeing there is Knit Picks, Annie and Treasure, and Sapphire Heather Cutaway. It's Baby Alpaca. Um, you might remember it from when I worked my grandmother's sweater. Actually, some of the blue came from that. I only had a little bitty section of that blue in that sweater. And I repurposed that yarn and ordered more yarn for that. It hasn't come in yet, but it's going to be 17 skeins <laughs> with that order. So it's two sweaters if you think about it. Um, a lot. Beautiful. Yeah. So, but it, at least it's a yarn that I enjoy working with. I, In retrospect, I can't imagine trying to work two sweaters in a yarn I wasn't that thrilled about. Um, and this is something she's going to be wearing close to her skin. So it, to have it scratchy would have been a horrible thing. I'm doing the ribbing part. I mean, you can't really. There. There's some ribbing. Is there a pattern to it? No, it's just ribbing. Um, down here? That was my cast on. Oh, um, I see. Okay. I need to remember that cast on I showed you. Which Not one? the long tail. Um, yeah, yeah. The yeah. one that's just where you twist it around. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to go back to long tail or something because this leaves a little bit too obvious of a cast on. Um, which is okay. I can do the math needed to get a long enough tail for the, for the long tail cast on. Look up that book I have. If you want to try something else? Long tail is probably the most versatile. Mm -hmm. Um. I just have to do a little extra math to make sure I have a long enough tail. It's just a pain in the butt when you, you know, just want to go and cast it, on. Yeah. Um, there's also the knitted cast on, which I could do as well. Is that the one off the crochet one? No, although you can do it off the crochet. Oh, I know what that one is. That's the one where you actually are acting like you're knitting. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that one that much. I, I mean, you can, it's not bad. It's just not as easy as the one that I did, I did for these two swatches. So, I mean, that's all that's been done on this project is um, gauge swatches. I would have been farther along if I'd stuck with the other yarn. Actually, no, I wouldn't have been. I hadn't even finished the other gauge swatch. You weren't liking it. No, I wasn't. So, um, yeah, this works up a lot quicker. Okay, now the final one that I'm working on. I know this is taking forever. Um... It's 50 minutes in. I'm going to have five seconds to talk. It's not 50 minutes in. 50 minutes in. It's my changer. Okay. The next project I'm working on is, I'm calling it Besk because I don't have any other better name for it yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey. I'm sorry it makes me laugh. Bring it out. It's cute. It's the pattern Patty the Pillow Pony by Allison Cleaver. It's adorable. I'm making it for me. I want to there we go. Uh, making it for me um, using US 8 Knit Picks Interchangeable Circulars. Um, did I say US 8? I think I did. Yeah, did. Um, using, this is the yarn that I was going to use for mom's uh, sweater, and then I didn't want it to because it's too itchy. Um, yarn Bees and it's Alpaca, which is 85% acrylic, 15% alpaca in the Arabesque colorway. For this pattern, you need to know how to do Judy's Magic Cast On or the Turkish Cast On. You need to know how to knit to purl, to cable four front, to cable six front, to knit two together, to knit three together, to make one, also known as make one left, um, slip slip knit, to slip stitch, um, to wrap and turn, to kitchener. This pattern will be approximately 13 inches high and 14 inches long. It's even bigger than my plus plus was. <laughs> and I'm using, when she did the pattern, what she tells you to do is to... Look at what your yarn tells you to use for the for it, and then go two, one or three, one to three sizes smaller. Mm -hmm. Mine told me to use ten size ten needles, so I used size eight. She used the size six for whatever. So her yarn had required a smaller needle. Yeah, eight or something. So mine is going to be bigger than that, than her 13 inches and 14 inches. She must have been using a uh, sport weight or something. She said it was worse than I thought. But it didn't really, it doesn't really matter. I wanted to use up yarn because I have a whole lot of this yarn. Yeah, considering I bought you some stuff, you said you wanted more. Isn't that cute? So he's cute. He has some cabling. She said that it's an intermediate pattern because you do have the cabling and the Judy's Magic and all that. All her horses are blue green. Yeah, but the other one's not my horse. No, it's mine. Um, I'll just see once he's done or. Okay, let's see what size you know, comes out. What size eyes I need? I think it's in the big eyes. I think so too. I think 24. 
24 is not that 30. big. I had 24 in, um, in your pony. I'm not sure how big they get. Big I'll big. have to get a couple of big sizes. And mm -hmm. I can always use the big sizes later. Because I like big eyes in my toys. Um, so, I was using Harmony Wood. This just doesn't want to stay on my needles. I don't know why. Um, I was using Harmony Wood, but um, I developed a sort of like a sliver in my Harmony Wood. And it caught on the yarn. So, maybe I'll be able to file it down or something for a different project. Or I'm just going to have to dump that one pair of Harmony Wood needles. Oh. Which would be sad. Um, because that's the first time I've had any issue with the Harmony Woods. Um, but thankfully I had a metal, um, metal nails in the same size. So I stuck those on instead. I redid the stitches that got frayed. This is the beginning of a foot. It's already having a cable develop. Oh, that showed up really nicely. Oh, it did, didn't it? It's not really pretty. Um, I'm going to have to stuff it as I go along. I wasn't going to, but then I looked at it and I was like, yeah, it'll be a lot easier. If I I've noticed a lot of the patterns that are bigger call for that. This is only supposed to be lightly stuffed in the foot, so I did four of these. It'll be an easy, fairly mindless project. I They told me to work on DPNs, but I haven't figured out yet how to easily work uh, two DPNs. Um, it's just, in my head, if you're going to have it on only two needles, it's a lot easier to work it magic loop. If it gets to a point where they tell me to put it on three needles, I'll switch over to the DPN, so it's not a problem. But at this point, with it only being on two needles, it's just easier to go with magic loop. So there's that. I have I have DPNs in here the proper size, and I've been using it to cable with. But. Yep, I started the foot last night. That's why I have Ninja Turtles on the brain. <laughs> Maybe we'll watch that tonight. I did enjoy. Oh, because Vivian can't watch it, can she? Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. Okay. Um. Anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna need to get a new, new uh plug for my laptop. This one's getting a little frayed. Um. Uh, hope we don't cut out in the middle here. No, we won't. Um. It's been like this for a while. It's there. We go. It's not so much the plug is frayed. It's um, the outer um, casing. casing is. Um, I have extra plugs in my room. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's all of mine. For sure. sure. Many years later. Yeah, it's your turn. Okay. Um, mine's kind of short. I really didn't do a lot of work on much of anything this week. It's been a kind of strange week. Um, my Blue Heaven sweater and my, um, Claret shawl and pretty in pink, all that is just sitting in my bags right now. I don't know if I've lost interest in it temporarily. I think it's just that I have a lot of things to do for Christmas and oh. birthdays. Oh, poo. Oh, the bloody nose. All right. Sorry, he talks. Anyway, um, I put a lot of, I'm putting a lot aside for Christmas and birthdays and other kinds of gifts. I am continuing to work on my mindless project, my Nicole. Uh, pattern. I did manage to change the colors. This is the right side here. The needles are kind of close together for me to show you. Um, you can see that I've changed the colors here to the light tan. Um, Actually, it shows it a lot better here than it did. It does. You could hardly see it when I was showing you before. Of course, I only had one row at that point. Let me stop this off with trending. So this one, I've worked on a little bit. Um, Those things you start to stay got nails. That's how you did. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the weather is making them. Well, then they, they make it as yeah, Never mind. Um, so I, I worked on that a little bit. I usually work on that if things are going on. I can't concentrate. I put it aside because I wanted to do some other projects. Um, I've been working a lot. Oh, I'm sorry. For this one, all you have to do is you have to know how to knit, cast on a knit, bind off. You know, you have to be able to pick up stitches, change colors. But essentially. It's straight garter stitch, and if I can do it as a really beginner person, it's a great project to start with for someone who doesn't know how to knit. The only thing that's a little bit difficult if you're learning, and I'm sorry, I'm playing notes, I get these too often. Uh, the only thing that's a little hard is learning how to pick up stitches. Yeah, I'm still having a little bit of difficulty with that, but I'll get it eventually. With, um, I think I actually picked up all your stitches for you. 
Ah, crap. No, I picked up my own. You showed me how to do it. Oh, okay. Was that what it was? I didn't let you do my stitch. I did myself. All by myself. Not very pretty, but I did it all by myself. <laughs> anyway, um, so I worked on that. And then I worked on Davina's um, Christmas stole. And it's coming along fairly well. I don't. I think I'm about halfway through. I don't. I'm not quite sure uh, because I, I'm not sure how long the border is going to be, the edging. But it is growing fairly fast, but not fast as fast as I'd like because I really am not working on it as much as I'd like. It, right, Taya? Yeah, I just had to mark off the okay. stone. So it's it is it is growing. It's not a difficult pattern. It is a fun pattern. It grows fairly quickly. Um, it's called the um, Block Stitch Blanket by Kathy North, which, like I said, I am um, modifying to make into a stole. <coughs> I will be adding a border to it in a an off white with little sparkles on it because she likes a little bit of what she calls bling and style and all that kind of stuff. And in order to do that, you need to know how to um, basically do double crochets and work in the back loops. Um, not very hard. It's a lot of fun. It's the color yarn I'm using is uh, the Plum Perfect colorway in the Caron Simply Soft and I'm using a, an eye hook to do that project. The pattern I've been spending the most time on is my test pattern for Anastasia Knit. And no, you can't show that, can you? Yes, I can. You can't show yeah, that. Yeah, I can. Um, to be honest with you, I almost told Anastasia I couldn't do it because it was driving me insane because I wasn't getting the pattern correctly in my head. Once I finally figured out what it was she was saying, because I'm challenged, it's not her, it's me, um, it moved pretty quickly. It's called the, um, Ag I'm sorry, Anastasia, I don't know how to pronounce this, Agunaquit Granny Afghan, and I guess it's named after the beach she went to. And it's done, it's the one that is worked on three sides. This fourth side works as you go around. And as you see, I made quite a bit of progress on it. I'm getting ready to do the second of the two uh, dividing white um, rows. You know, and then I'm going to add my next color, which is going to be a, um, I, think, I think I said it was going to be either a light green or light pink. I'm not sure which one. I think it's a light green. Very much the colors that tend to be at our house. Anyway. Yes. If you look back here at this blanket here, it's basically these colors. Only there's going to be um, two pinks two greens and two blues, not just the one. And it's going to be this kind of <laughs> rectangular half square um, granny, which I'm really liking. It really works very well now that I, as long as I pay attention and know, uh, now that I know what I'm doing, it's moving along really fast. Um, I can't go too much into what is required except to say that it's um, basically double crochets and single crochets. And all you need to do is know how to follow that pattern, maybe change colors if you want to do more than one color. I haven't seen anybody in the test pattern use only one color. Um, and uh, I'd say it's maybe an advanced beginner pattern. It's really a lot of fun. And um, when it's available, I suggest, you know, I really suggest you take a look at it. Um, in order to work this, let me see here. Um, I'm using my stash. I have a ton of this color yarn because I use a lot of, uh, I do a lot of projects in those colors. Um, I am, I've gotten through the um, first set, and I know I'm all over the place, I'm a little tired. Um, I've gotten through the first set of repeats for the um, directions. Now the, the rows five and six, the rounds five and six are repeated indefinitely until you get the size you want. So that's where I am right now. And I'm using, um, I'm using an H hook. Yeah, I'm using an H hook for this. And my stash is, you know, basically red heart yarn for this project. Um, and a single, you use a chain, single crochet, double crochet. Oh, you weren't going to go to your I wasn't, that's right. So, <coughs> but, uh, knitting around. You're not knitting in this project. It's crochet. But anyway, that's basically what I've got long and short of it. So, because your FO, I hate us. Well, I'll, while she's getting ready, I'll tell you I don't have any FOs this time around. I apologize. I just want to make sure I'm done bleeding. I don't want to start bleeding all over the place. 
because I know some people really don't handle the sight of blood, blood very well. Uh, I had a roommate in college who, who really couldn't do it. Oh, crap. You go ahead. All right. Um, I go on next on needles. Okay. I don't have any FOs. Um, for my next on the needles, I had to reevaluate. I think I said briefly that I have to reevaluate what I'm doing because um, I have a lot of projects going on. I'm getting a little bit stressed because I have time limits on some. So basically, I am putting everything that I have on my hooks and needles that is not time sensitive aside. I'm working on my Organiquit <coughs> Granny Afghan, which is um, a test pattern that needs to be finished, I think, by November 15th or something like that. So that's going to keep, I'm going to keep working on that. Um, I'm going to keep working on the stole, which has to be done for Christmas. Um, those are my two that are currently um, on the needles I'm going to continue working on. But then I'm going to uh, hop to something that is new. I need to start up the simple pillow for my, my parents, the rest of their gift, if I'm going to do it because they'll be here at the end of November. I also uh, have to do one or more stuffed turkeys for my Thanksgiving centerpiece. Um, it looks like a really easy pattern. It shouldn't be a problem. But if I'm going to make it, I need to start it. And that has to be done by the end of this month. So that will be start up pretty quick. Um, the other thing that I need to start up is the Melvin the Misunderstood Monster. I am going to make one for myself. The one that I need to start up, however, is the one for thing one upstairs. Um, she keeps asking me about it. I know she wants one, and I would like it to be a Christmas gift for her. She's had a little bit of a rough time, so it may not even, if I can get it yeah, finished, even if, if, if I can finish it before Christmas, she might get it for Thanksgiving or something. Um, but that needs to be started. And then... Uh, after that, um, I'm supposed to be doing a test, uh, not a test, a cowl with a chevron lace cardigan, which I have not even started. I probably will not finish it in time. I think it finishes uh, either the end of November or the beginning of December, but I would at least like to start it. Um, and then, of course, more toys for the toy along, uh, the Sedna shawl. I have a lot of things that I want to do. I have to do, I have a uh, huge scrappy animal. Oh, poo. A uh, huge scrappy animal by Stacy Trock that I want to try, and I want to uh, get rid of some of my stash, and I want to get uh, my hippo started for the CCD. So I've got a lot on the needles, but I have to prioritize um, my hooks and needles. So, so I'm just saying I'm going to be doing the rest of this like this. So I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I do have an FO. It's adorable. Uh, it's the Weirdest River Pattern by Michelle McLaughlin. I hope you guys can hear me okay. Uh, it's, it's for Pinktober. It's a, it's a, who, let me read out for you. Um, oh, I, I wrote, uh, Michelle, I already said yeah, it. Aware, aware, Awareness Ribbon Pattern by Michelle McLaughlin. Yeah. Um, I think they can hear me okay. It's just, it's going to be annoying, that's all. Uh, I waited for Pinktober. It's a knitted long, crochet long, uh, done by uh, the niece of the Knitting Den, uh, although it was, Cappy 913's idea, uh, she's from Knit Nerd. So the two of them were doing a joint knit along, knit along, there we go, uh, for uh, Breast Cancer Awareness. Because it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And this is what I did. Not showing up very well. No, it's not. I don't think that helps. I think it's the bright light because it's so light. It's Wait, here we go. If you put it up against my shirt. Yeah, it has to be up against something dark. Uh, it's, if you can't tell, it's one of those ribbons. It's a ribbon here. Yeah, there we go. We can see and I'm just going to give it to a co-worker who uh, is a breast cancer survivor. I'll give it to her on the slide because people are already hinting that they want me to make them things when they catch me uh, knitting during my lunch break. And I really don't want to make everyone something just because they want me to. I want to make what I want to make for people. Uh, which sounds selfish, but it's my knitting. It's my uh, it's your hobby. My hobby, and I don't want it to become a job. It's your relaxation. Yeah, and it's not gonna be relaxing if I'm making things I don't want to make for people who I only have a working relationship with. But uh, this I did want to give to this particular nurse. I think she'll enjoy it. And she's been doing. She's been working hard lately. She's really a sweetheart, so I think she'll like that. Not a complicated pattern. It's crochet. It's free. Put up by Suncatcher Eyes. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, and I bought the eyes for them too. Little pea guys. Uh, that's it for FOs. You better go right into your next on the needles. Next on the needles, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's the other. T well, next on the needles for me going to be the other tin by Kathleen Babe. I'm hoping to finish Vivian first, so I'm not working two cable sweaters at once. But I like doing cable, so I don't know. Someone has a pattern out, or has created an amigurumi of Master Chief from Halo. They told me once they figure out what they did, they'll release the pattern. Because I asked them about it, and they completed it, and I wanted to make that. Um, and my mom's like, oh, you can make it for your dad. I'm like, shh, I want it for myself. <laughs> you also told you had to, yeah. So, yeah, uh, <clears throat> the, hopefully that, the powder she'll get that written out, and I'll be able to take that, to use that and make Master Chief. So it's small, early. right? About six inches. Yeah, it's not very big. That's cool. Uh, and then I want to eventually start the catnip socks. Again, something cable. Uh, obviously I like working cables. So those are my next on the needles. I'm going to let you go stash enhancement first. Okay, my stash enhancements, um. The ones that I have, oh, the only one I can really show you is my yarn scale. Um, Knit Picks was, is phasing these out, I guess, because I'm not going to be selling them anymore. So I picked one up because when I do things like the test for, oh, it does have a battery in it. Um, I couldn't remember. It, uh, I haven't even opened this yet, as you can tell. They, it was 1999 and they still have them at the store if you need one. Let's see open this. Well, I only have one hand, so I can't help you. Oh, here we go. My husband will be cringing right now. He hates styrofoam. So if you hate styrofoam, sorry. But <laughs> this is um, this is the scale. It does grams and it does uh, ounces. Ty has one that I've been using um, to um, weigh the yarn I've been using for Anastasia. But I wanted to have my own. It was only 1995, I think it was, while supplies last. So if you need a yarn scale, you might want to go over to Knit Picks and check it out. Um, I really like Talia's, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure I like this one as well. I'm sorry about the scratch on the styrofoam. Um, so that's one of the things I got. Um, I also went to Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby's a bad place. It really is. It's an evil place. We were waiting for Taya to get back from her, to finish up her nursing thing, that six-hour thing where she lost her voice. We were waiting to pick her up at Hobby Lobby for an hour and a half. Not a good thing. My husband spent a lot of money on his stuff. My other daughter spent a lot of money on her yarn and, and drawing materials. And I spent a lot of money. And actually, I did better than anybody else. I was kind of proud of myself. I actually put stuff back. But I did pick up some yarn to... Um, <coughs> round out my toy stash. Um, I got because I wanted to make turkeys for the for the uh, Thanksgiving. Because I showed my husband a picture, I was not really seriously thinking about doing it. I said, "Oh, look at this!" He's like, "Oh yeah, that's a great idea." So <laughs> I needed to get more yarn. Talia gave me some brown yarn, but I needed some light tan and some burnt orange. And I think I picked up um, another color that maybe I didn't necessarily need per se, but it rounded out my stash, so I picked that up. And then I picked up some off-white and some white of the uh, cotton yarn. Uh, I need it for the hippopotamus teeth on the pattern I'm making for from Stacy Trock for my CCD class. So I got some yarn, and uh, I'm not going to show it to you because I already put it in my shelves, and you know what yarn looks like. You've seen the uh, I Love Yarn before, and you've seen my... Um, sugar and cream or whatever it's called now, peaches and cream yarn that I've showed you before. I don't need to show it to you again. Um, my other stash enhancements have not yet arrived, um, so I will show you them when they do arrive. Um, but that's it. Let's see if I'm done. Maybe when you do that, I should hold on to it so you don't get stuff all over it. Do what? When you show your stash enhancements. I think I'll be done. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. I just decided that this is going to be what it's going to do. Okay. Let me get up and get my fast hands from over there.
I think that chicken noodle soup is in my future after this. Yeah. I'm going to fold the yarn away from me. So, No Makers is having a deal mm -hmm. uh, this Friday. Um, you could get a couple of, get one of her skinny dapers for uh, $12. So, that was a really good deal. So, I got two. For, you to, for those of you who don't know what those are, because some people call it different things. Oh, yeah. I think um, Rachel calls them pot soakers. These are the end of the dye pot. So, they're like, not repeatable. Yeah. Um, at least not in the exact not in the exact amount. But the yarn itself is still good quality. Yeah. It's uh four hundred and thirty four yards each. So for four hundred and thirty four yards you're getting a sock weight. It's sock weight through four hundred and thirty four yards. Uh and it's uh twelve dollars for each of them. It's pretty nice. And it's a mystery. Yeah, you, get. you don't know what you're gonna get when you get it. Yeah. <clears throat> These are more mom's colors than mine. I'm kinda hoping that hers is more my Yeah, mine hasn't come in yet. I ordered mine first, but Amanda, I think um when she sent it out in the different um bunches, mine got set in the second batch. So. I mean these are really pretty. They're gorgeous. They're gorgeous, but I kinda hope hers are more my color because these are very much her colors. Okay, so it's sixty percent superwash merino, thirty percent bamboo, and ten percent nylon. Excited about the bamboo. I've never worked with bamboo. Yeah, Have you? I haven't either. That's it's kind really of shiny. Silver gray. Yeah. Uh, it's got like a purple undertone. Mm -hmm. Purple blue kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then here's the blue one. Like I said, very much mom's colors. And I love Amanda's variegated yarn, but honestly, I love these better. <laughs> There's it. She can make it to shop. I, yeah. I mean, that's why I'm really, really, really hoping she gets something crazy for her. Skinny zipper, and then I can go, show! <laughs> because I'm making socks, and socks are more fun if they're crazy. Uh, and this would make a beautiful shawl. Uh, yeah. Actually, that might make a very beautiful uh, uh, Sedna. Yeah, it would. Yeah, it would. But it's, it's very pretty. Um, Amanda does ex exceptional work. Oh yeah, that's, that's there's no doubt the colors are gorgeous. Yeah, I did. Mean, I, I was hoping for something a little more wild. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. And she said that not all of them are necessarily <coughs> going to be plain. Yeah. So we'll see what I get in the mail. I have several coming in the mail from her. I'm hoping you just go yoink <laughs> and pass mine over to her because, like I said, very pretty, just a little too uh, subtle. Subtle for me. If you've noticed anything about the projects I tend to work, the colors tend, tend to be a bit more vibrant. Well, I use vibrant too. I have a beautiful red shawl I'm working. True. But but I do tend more toward the blues and the greens. and the. I love red as well, but I just don't do as much with it. Um, so, okay. uh, other things for stash hands, but I got blocking pads, which I'm not pulling out. Um, got Nipix DPNs, which you saw in my other project. I got some other nitpick needles. <coughs> so that leads on to obsessions. Um, there's Toy Long. Um, it's going from September 1st to December 15th. These, if you're new, um, drop, drop by. Stop by? Drop by. Stop, 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 stop by. Uh, Stop by the um, Ravelry group. It's Nurse with Needles uh, podcast. There's two Nurse with Needles groups. One's Nurses with Needles, and it's a. Um, I might have to change group name because I bet a lot anyone who's trying to find us might find this other group. Instead, I actually linked myself one time to that other group. Oh, you think so? What What should we call ourselves? We should have a poll. <laughs> no, actually, we'll have to figure it out. Actually, like, that's not a bad idea. One doesn't incorporate their other hobbies, but like writing and stuff. Because I'm wondering if uh, I had, you know, that one I was going to do for my um, for my um, by hook or by crook, by hook or by, 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 hook by, by crook. needle, by hook or by needle. Um, but uh, so but I yeah, I might start a a thread. Let me write a note. Start hooks, pins, and needles, or something like that. You know, a uh, thread. About new podcast name because I'm wondering if people aren't able to find the podcast because 
we are so close to this other group's name. I mean, they're nurses with needles, and this is nurse with needles. And really, since it's become a joint venture, it's not just a nurse with needles anymore. I probably should have changed it a long time ago. Um, <clears throat> and now this is a good enough excuse. Anyway, right now it's the Nurse with Needles podcast uh, on Ravelry. If you find the group, um, you'll find our toy along. It's going through September 1st to, to December 15th. But you can't have started. You could have, yeah. It, if you started it um, in August, you were okay, just as long as you finish it between September and December. Um, put in as many entries as you want, one picture per entry. Uh, there will be a chatter thread and a pictures only thread. Well, there is a chatter thread and a pictures only thread. Mm -hmm. I'm reading from my notes. And we've got some wonderful, oh, wonderful and toys. They're so, people so are having creative. so much fun with this toy along. They're so supportive. Um, the ideas are there are really great. This has been a blast. I can't wait to see how much more we'll see as it keeps going. Uh, this is this is a great idea. I think we're going to have to do this yearly. It'd be nice to do around this time of year for gifts. You know? Yeah, I think um, that we'll just always do it around this time. Um, uh, winners will be drawn from the pictures only thread. Winner. Winner. Excuse me. Um, the prize is two toy patterns of your choice, um, each no more than ten dollars. Um, at this point, there's only one winner because, to be quite frank, I don't, I can't unless I find like a yarn that I want to get rid of. I can't afford to just keep. I could probably no. no. <laughs> at this point, all I can afford is one oh, one prize. I'll do one, and you'll do one. So yeah. yeah. Um. So make sure if you're taking part in this knit along, crochet along, be sure to add the tag. Toy Along 2012 in your projects. And I added that little tag to the top of the chatter thread and to the top of the um, uh, pictures only thread. So you can see that you need to add it. Uh, if you follow me on Plurk, I also put it up on Plurk. Mm -hmm. Just so that way we can see when we take a look at the tags uh, of all projects, we can see all the projects line up. And, and don't and don't and don't worry about the fact that if you don't have it yet, you can just add it in now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it doesn't disqualify you or anything. I just kind of would like the tag to be there. Um. So yeah, um, be sure to let us know what you think are good. Um, is a good name for the podcast. Um. And yeah, we'll go from there. We'll have to do a search to make sure before we choose it that whatever people suggest isn't already used. Right. Okay. It might take a little while for um, iTunes to adjust to whatever we choose. Right. And we, you know, we have. I wonder if we should do a prize for whoever gets. Well, if somebody name. does, I know, I know, we have a couple in mind that we like too. We yeah. might, we might, if we decide to choose if your someone, name. If someone picks a name that we have not thought <clears> of, <throat> yeah, then we might, if we can find something worth giving y'all, yeah, we might um, do a prize for that. <coughs> but to keep in mind, keep in mind that. At least one half of this group <laughs> would like to have something to do with writing involved too. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, writing, knitting, and crocheting. You're right. Yeah. I'm sorry. So just uh, keep that in mind when you know you think of the name. So um, the next uh, thing that I want to talk about is the Calendar of Hope 2013. I got contacted by on October 9th by. Um, Fitter Knitter, um, who's Cindy Moore, um, what's your child's last name? Anyway, she, uh, she, uh, she puts out a calendar called the Calendar of Hope. Uh, it's a fifth year publication, and in the five years, she has raised over 5000 for breast cancer. Um, the calendar contains 14 never before published knitting patterns, and if you... What kind of patterns? Um, they tend to be dishcloths, it looks like. So if you're new to, if you're to knitting, it's a good way to start. Um, I'll proceed to the calendars, except, you know, the fees for PayPal. Uh, go to uh, the go to breast cancer awareness. Um, it goes to www.armyofwomen.org, um, where the goals are to, you know, increase research to, for breast cancer. Um, and to just help with breast cancer in general. Um, I think you get the calendar from, um, 
www.fitterknitter.com. So make sure that you um, that you go there, that you support them um, in this amazing cause. Um, and it sounds like she's hit up a couple of other podcasters. Right. Um, I heard the, uh, Kathy Knitting talking about her yesterday. I and, think we've told Kathy, haven't we? Um, I mentioned to um, to Cindy that uh, Kathy from the Knit Nerd would be very interested. Would be very interested. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be hearing about it from there too and get more Ravelers. Ravelers? Ravelry. Ravelers? Ravelers. <laughs> um, get more Ravelry people. More of us. <laughs> more of us. <laughs> um, interested. Your turn. Obsessions. Obsessions. Um. Yeah. Projects. Um. I have an obsession with toys. <laughs> I have my toy queue is growing larger and larger and larger. Uh, Stacy Chalk especially. Um, Crafty. I I'm really going to have to stop looking at their emails. Uh, Project bags. Um, I look. At, I continue to look at the bags. I have several coming in, so I really don't need any at this point. I need to stop looking at them as well. No makers. Amanda is the biggest enabler ever, right up there with certain other people that we will not mention. Uh -huh. So uh, I see an update on her, and I'm in trouble. So um, those are my obsession. Oh, my writing is an obsession as well. But otherwise. Basically, that's it. Alrighty. <clears throat> so, talking about writing, I completed the shared story today and handed it over to her, and it's out of my park. It's in my court. I have blocked out the first 10 pages or so that she sent me. I've not started writing on it. I have to reread it because I really basically skimmed it this morning when I got it. Um, <clears throat> but I did, I didn't do any other writing. Um, Really, but I did, well, I did, but not original writing. I did about twelve to 1,500 words on my synopsis, which may not sound like a lot of writing, but at the rate I've been going, and that is a lot. <laughs> and trying to condense like 135,000 plus words into about <clears throat> 10 to 14 pages is <laughs> it's very challenging. Um, I need to make sure I hit all the points, but not drag it on. So I have a rough draft that's approximately 8 to 10 pages right now I guess and I'm just about maybe about 80 percent through the story so I'm getting really close I'll have to do some fill-in after I'm done that's good. Um, I also did some editing for a couple of friends uh, or a friend a couple of pieces uh, that she is doing for her story. Um, it's a really good story. I enjoy editing it. So I did that. Um, and I actually feel like writing again, which is good if I can only find the time to do it. So uh, that's where I am with writing. Alrighty, which um, then brings us on to a new section, which I'm calling artwork. Wow, very creative. I picked up my pastels again. Those of you who have been following me on Plurk, um, followed me as I was like going, oh, I feel like drawing again, and then oh, I can't find my pastels, and then oh, I found my pastels. So, um, what started me going again was I was doing a search for whatever reason on oh, I wanted to see if there was um, to maybe to complement my Batman knitting, if maybe there's Master Chief from Halo knitting, and I came up with a like a roomy in my search and blah blah blah. For some reason. Something about some of my search things made me want to go and look um, in my old artwork on Facebook. And I was like, huh, I actually was, you know, pretty good. Um, and it really prompted me to want to draw again. So, I mean, it's not finished. Um, Cortana needs to be colored in the back. It's, I might want to blend that red a little better with that orange. Well, for those who don't know, Halo Cortana is the female in the back. Yeah, um, you can barely see her. Um, she comes up pretty well. Well, she's uh, there's going to be like some light blue behind her. Because mm -hmm. um, she's translucent, I think the word is. Yeah, and uh, then I'll do her in blue. Uh, I kind of wanted that red to fade into orange a little better, but I also wanted it to be kind of obvious. So. 
I guess I'm getting what I paid for. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's it so far. Master Chief himself is all taken care of. His gun's all taken care of. It's just the background and Cortana. So, I mean, not bad for not having worked on doing anything artistic in over a year. You Well, crocheting and knitting. Fact, but I mean... You mean drawing. Drawing-wise. Right? Yeah. Different kind of art. <coughs> yeah. Must be specific. So, yes, um, I've been doing a little bit of that every night since I found my pastels. Um, or my dad found my pastels. And actually, it's helped me with my writing, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess that's just about everything. I can hear Davina coming downstairs. coming downstairs. So this is a good time to say um, goodbye you. and thank, thank you. Well, I don't have any extra thank yous. I just have, I wanted, I don't remember if I thanked Sun Country or not or when she actually gave me my encouragement to continue with my writing that would come. Regardless of whether it was this week or last week, I want to thank her again because I keep that in mind when I get discouraged. It's been really helpful. So thank you, Sun Country. I appreciate it. It's been um Motivational, I appreciate it. It's been real. It's been real. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, if, um, if you haven't been to the Nurse Neal's group already, stop by. Um, I will be putting up a thread about um, what the new group name will be because I'm a little tired of our group uh, being accidentally linked to um, Nurses with Needles, um, which is a hospital, I think. Anyway. Goofer Hospital. So, yeah, stop by, put in your opinion. I think there might be a prize if your group suggestion, your group name suggestion gets chosen. And that's to be announced at some other point. Let me decide if we have something. <laughs> well, I mean, it might be something as simple as a pattern. Mm -hmm. we'll we'll figure it out. Yeah. We have time. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to give overly long. I mean, a right. couple weeks. Yeah. We have time to think about it. Okay. So, All right. We're babbling. Yep. Thank you very much for God stopping my watching. Sorry for it being so lit. <laughs> Alrighty. Have God a good bye. day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.